Thomas Lewis, A General Theory of Love. Dive into the fascinating world of human emotions as we explore the insightful book, A General Theory of Love, by Thomas Lewis. This summary will take you on a journey through the evolution of the human brain and its impact on our behavior, particularly in the realm of love and attachment. You'll discover the roles of neurotransmitters such as serotonin, oxytocin, and opiates in shaping our emotions, as well as the power of attractors in defining our experiences. As you piece together the complex puzzle of human emotions, you'll gain a deeper understanding of the interplay between our perceptions, feelings, and experiences. Evolution of the Emotional Brain Human emotions have been studied by scientists for centuries, and our modern understanding of the brain's evolution has played a key role in explaining our emotions and behavior. Our brain has three distinct sections which reflect its evolutionary journey, the reptilian brain, the limbic brain, and the neocortex. These sections influence our emotional responses and help us survive in new environments, form close social groups, and make well-reasoned decisions. Understanding this complex system can shed light on the surprising aspects of human behavior in relationships. Tracing back to 450 BC, Hippocrates, considered the first physician in the Western world, had already linked emotions to the brain. Denoting a natural curiosity about human emotion, scientific understanding has progressed throughout human history, culminating in our extensive modern knowledge of the brain's structure and functions. A particularly fascinating breakthrough in neuroscience is the discovery of the human brain's evolution. Our ancestors faced numerous challenges and needed to adapt to survive in ever-changing environments. As a result, their brains slowly evolved, allowing them to outsmart predators and secure food resources. So, what does the current human brain look like? It can be divided into three sections, each serving a unique purpose. Firstly, there is the reptilian brain, the most primitive layer, responsible for basic bodily functions and primal impulses. Secondly, there is the limbic brain, encompassing critical structures like the amygdala, which regulates fear responses. This layer allowed mammals to form close social bonds and protect their offspring, unlike their reptilian counterparts. Lastly, our brain houses the neocortex, the most sophisticated segment tasked with reasoning, planning, and communication. This section enables us to reflect on our actions and make thoughtful decisions, rather than merely relying on instinct. As we delve deeper into the subject, the intricacies of the three-layered brain reveal why human behavior, particularly in relationships, is often unpredictable and surprising. By comprehending the interplay between these brain sections, we gain a better grasp of the complex world of human emotions and actions. Unraveling Love's Neurochemistry Love and attachment, though seemingly profound emotions, are deeply rooted in our brain's chemistry. Three neurotransmitters are key in shaping our sense of attachment, serotonin, oxytocin, and opiates. Serotonin helps alleviate anxiety and depression, playing a role in dealing with grief and heartbreak, and even assisting in breaking free from unhappy relationships. Oxytocin, known for cementing the bond between mothers and their newborns, also influences attachment throughout our lives. Studies on different species have linked oxytocin levels to variations in social behavior and monogamy, revealing the far-reaching effects of this powerful chemical. In understanding the neurochemical foundations of our emotional lives, we can better navigate the complexities of love and attachment in our human experience. Opiates, the pain-soothing double agent. Pain has played an essential role in human evolution, helping to protect us from injury and harm. Our neural system allows us to detect pain but also provides relief through the release of natural opiates. These opiates can soothe both emotional and physical pain, a feature that evolved as mammals needed the ability to form attachments and cope with loss. However, this dual function of opiates has a dark side, as some individuals resort to self-harm as a means to alleviate emotional distress. When someone physically injures themselves, the brain releases opiates that ultimately numb both the physical and emotional pain felt, making self-harm a dangerous coping mechanism for some experiencing intense emotional anguish. 
Unraveling the Attractors Our brains are wired with interconnected elements, known as attractors, that influence our perception and learning. Attractors are developed through life experiences and shape our memories, enabling us to grasp distorted letters, correct typos, and even form our sense of attachment. Understanding how attractors work can help us improve perception and deepen our recognition of human emotions. Attractors, an essential yet subtle aspect of human intelligence, significantly impact our perception and experiences. Found in our memory, these interconnected elements are what hover between the written word and your brain's interpretation of it, influencing what we learn and perceive effortlessly. Take handwriting as an example, quite often, someone's penmanship resembles more of a scrawl than a collection of legible words. However, due to attractors, we can discern even the most dreadful handwriting without breaking a sweat. Even when your written H looks more like an A, attractors allow readers to correctly interpret the word A house as house. Such cognitive shortcuts are possible because attractors ingrain ideal or prototypical representations in our memories. When we encounter a distorted letter or a typo, the attractors interfere and override our perception, helping us correct and understand the intended meaning more efficiently. For instance, if we stumble upon the typo, tot, the attractor responsible for the prototypical, that, steps in and clarifies the writer's intended message. Attractors are not limited to reading and writing, they also play an essential role in shaping our emotional experiences. From our nascent days, our brain forms attractors that connect and influence our memories. These established links within our brain are built upon our experiences. The limbic brain, responsible for our feelings, is also influenced by attractors. Our experiences forge the ideal sentiment of attachment throughout our lives. Grasping the mechanisms of attractors assists us in deciphering human emotions better and navigating our relationships more effectively. Shaping Emotional Intelligence Emotional intelligence is rooted in an individual's ability to empathize with others and respond accordingly. Our emotional memory consists of interconnected elements, known as attractors. As infants, the limbic brain is unregulated, and it's through their mothers that babies develop an emotional prototype, guiding their ability to empathize later in life. A stable bond between parent and child is critical in building emotional intelligence. This limbic regulation continues to play a significant role in adulthood. Nurturing strong, stable relationships allows adults to grow and change emotionally, enabling them to modify their emotional attractors and positively influence the limbic brain. Our emotional memory is a complex system, consisting of interconnected elements called attractors. Throughout our lifetime, humans develop these networks, laying the foundation for emotional development early in life. In the beginning, infant's limbic brain, responsible for emotions, remains unregulated, requiring their mothers to shape their emotional experiences. Consider a toddler learning to walk, if the child falls and witnesses the mother's amusement, they may mimic the laughter. On the other hand, if the mother seems worried, the child is more likely to cry. This connection between child and parent is crucial for developing emotional intelligence, understanding others' emotions and appropriately responding to them. Limbic regulation doesn't end in childhood. As social creatures, adults also need emotional stabilization from external sources. While dependency on feedback might seem like weakness, it's actually the source of our strength in connecting with others. Maintaining stable, trusting relationships with close friends and romantic partners lets us modify the emotional attractors in our brains, expanding our capacity for growth and change on an emotional level. In essence, emotional intelligence begins in infancy but continues evolving through our relationships and connections with others. Developing this competence enables us to empathize, connect, and grow emotionally, shaping the diverse landscapes of our emotional memories. Reprogramming Emotional Inheritance The quality of our childhood attachments significantly influences our adult relationships, as these early experiences shape our emotional brain. When we inherit emotional problems, it's due to our influencers' underdeveloped emotional capacities. However, psychotherapy can help break this cycle by revising our limbic patterns, 
enabling us to make healthier choices in friends and romantic partners. Our emotional attachments stem from the relationships we form during childhood, and these early experiences play a crucial role in molding our brain's emotional architecture. Consequently, this foundation heavily influences our interpersonal connections in adulthood. When we grow up with individuals who carry their own unresolved emotional baggage, we may unknowingly inherit these issues. As a result, these emotional complications get passed down through generations, creating a seemingly inescapable cycle. But is there a way to break free from this undesirable pattern? Psychotherapy presents a promising solution. To understand its potential effectiveness, we must examine the concept of attractors. These attractors shape our emotional experiences much like a pair of green-tinted glasses, limiting our perception to that specific hue. In the same vein, our limbic system's attractors govern and restrict our emotions, subsequently influencing our choice of friends and romantic partners. When our childhood relationships are unstable, we risk acquiring flawed emotional programming. Luckily, psychotherapy can help rewrite our emotional programming by modifying the attractors within our brain. While therapists may disagree on the best method and approach, the key factor for success lies in their ability to revise the patient's network of attractors through a process called limbic revision. Successful psychotherapy allows patients to expand their emotional spectrum and, metaphorically, view the world beyond just the color green. As a result, individuals can forge relationships with friends and partners better suited to their emotional needs and preferences, ultimately liberating them from their inherited emotional constraints. Love versus In love In love, we experience captivating feelings such as the belief that our partner is the one, the longing for closeness, and the urge to focus solely on our love story. This honeymoon phase is beautiful, but it eventually fades into loving, the foundation for a long-lasting attachment. Our society's infatuation with eternal love found in TV shows, romantic comedies, and novels often leads to disappointment when real-life love evolves and changes. Elizabeth Barrett Browning, an English poet, once wrote, Whoso loves believes the impossible. In her words, she eloquently encapsulates what it means to be in love. But let's delve further into this phenomenon. Being in love encompasses three primary emotions. First, we find our partner fitting so perfectly into our lives that we believe no one else could ever compare. Although it's true that love can happen multiple times, the idea of finding the one is a powerful sentiment. Simultaneously, we experience an intense desire for physical closeness with our partner. Doubts about our relationship may arise when that closeness starts to wane. Lastly, our minds will rewrite the world around us to focus solely on our love story, often ignoring unrelated matters. It's crucial to understand the difference between falling in love and maintaining loving relationships. The initial stages of love, often called the honeymoon period, serve to bring two people together in a romantic bond. However, that is just the prelude to the long-term attachment that evolves from loving. The honeymoon phase, though enchanting, must inevitably come to an end. Our society, influenced by various media, often idealizes eternal love. Romantic comedies, novels, and TV shows commonly depict characters falling head over heels within a short time frame, ultimately uniting after overcoming obstacles. This narrative has become embedded in our minds as society's version of perfect love, leaving us disappointed and surprised when we confront the reality of love's fleeting nature. As love evolves and the honeymoon period recedes, we must remember that the foundation of everlasting relationships resides in loving rather than the initial rapture of falling in love. Love versus Being in love The essence of loving is vastly different from merely being in love. Love requires mutual emotional connection, long-term intimacy, and an attunement that adjusts personalities and behaviors to harmonize with each other. This deep connection grows over time, as individuals become limbically attuned to one another, creating shared ways to perceive the world and transforming their attractors. In contrast, falling in love can be a one-sided affair, grounded on shallow acquaintance. When we lose a partner, 
we might feel that, a part of me is gone, pointing to the profound impact of a transformed limbic connection. As we reach the end of this illuminating summary of a general theory of love, we've seen how the human brain evolved and adapted to environmental changes, and how the interplay between emotions, neurotransmitters, and attractors shape our feelings and relationships. We delved into the importance of early emotional development and limbic regulation with the crucial role of mothers, in forming a child's emotional intelligence. We've compared and contrasted the differences between falling in love and true love, emphasizing the significance of long-term intimacy and limbic attunement in creating deep connections. Armed with this newfound knowledge, you're better equipped to comprehend the dynamic nature of human emotions and their role in shaping our lives.